Father, we come before you this evening, God. Father, and we just thank you. We thank you, God, that you've brought us, God, into your house of worship, God, your house of prayer once again, Lord. Father, we ask that you would have your way, Father, that, God, we wouldn't put any limits on you, Lord, but whatever it is that you desire to do, Lord, we're, we're open, Lord God. Father, let every heart, every ear, God, that is receiving the message, God, tonight, they would be open and ready and, and just whatever it is that you want to do, Lord God. Father, we thank you for just everything that you are. Give, God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
What a beautiful time to exalt the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, what a beautiful time it is. You know, I want to I kind of make mention something to you that I believe is so, so very, very uh, powerful. We've, we've been uh, putting these t-shirts out. One of them is Attacking the City for Jesus. And uh, they've been going out. This one is I'm covered in the blood, not in the coronavirus. This one is the struggle is real, but Jesus is more real. And then this last one is need prayer, just ask me. And uh, I want to kind of make mention to you, you know, the reason I put these out was, uh, you know, you know, we want you to be able to touch so many people out there. You know, God needs people to touch others. You, you can touch others that we cannot. Uh, and, you know, when people see you wearing one of these T-shirts, they'll, they'll stop you, they'll ask you, where'd you get that? You know, can you pray for me? Can can you, I'm going through a struggle, can you help me, you know, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you mean by I'm covered in the blood, you know, and, and so forth. You know, they, they speak a, a message for you, and you're able to help people out there. That's the real reason that I, I put them out there for, uh, you know, yes, we, we sell them because uh, we got to be able to make more so that we can be able to uh, reach more people out there. But uh, the real reason is that we want to help people. And, and I pray that you will continue to g grab a hold of this so that you can help others. That's the real reason we're, we're living in a, in, a, in a time right now where people need help. And so I pray that you will, will continue to purchase them, get them, and then also we have the, the handkerchief. We, we have given over, I'm, I'm saying that we have given over 200 of these. Th this, is, this is a blessing. Listen, I want to give over 400 of these. I, I want to give them away uh, so that we can uh, see people healed and delivered and, and uh, saved and Set free from drug addiction and, and so many other things. The, our prayer partners there that come and pray here every day, daily, they pray over these handkerchiefs every day so that uh, when, you, when you get them, they're already prayed for. And uh, the scripture is from uh, uh, Acts chapter 19 where it says God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were, were taken to the sick and and their, and their illnesses were cured. Imagine, and, and I mean, you can find this scripture there and, and uh, uh, this, it's biblical. We're not doing something that's not biblical. And so, uh, I mean, it's free. Just call us. We wanna, we wanna get it into your hands. You know, we wanna help you. You know, people are, inside their homes. Uh, so many people don't, don't want to leave their homes. Uh, well, we want to help you. We want to help you. And so please contact us. We want to be of a blessing to you. Uh, and uh, I pray that you will lift up your phone, pick up your phone and give us a call. And uh, we want to give them to you. Uh, we want to make sure you, you they get into your hands and so that the Lord can can bless you amen praise the lord i want i want uh i want to take you today to the book of psalms psalms 86 and uh i was i was reading this yesterday at home as i was there and uh 
I was I was uh, getting into the Word of God, and, and last night, and as I, I was and as I was praying, seeking the Lord, and I was reading this psalm. It's a prayer of David. It, it's a prayer of David, and 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 you you would be surprised at how many individuals today are living in fear. And, and I want to say something to you. Uh, fear is the enemy of faith. And I know that many of you know that already. But I, I want to remind you that fear is the enemy of faith. God operates through faith. Our faith in him. Our faith in his word. And you and I have got, to, have got to put our faith and our trust in God Almighty, in, in, in his word, not in, in anything else. And, and I, I want you to see this with me today because this is so very, very important. And I like what David writes here because David writes this in, in the book of Psalms, in, in Psalms uh, 66, 86, I'm sorry, in Psalms 86, and he says, Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and distressed and needy and desiring. Ima imagine if there's ever a time in our time and day, imagine that we are poor and distressed and needy and desiring. We we every we fit every one of these every one of these characteristics that David is talking about. We need God now more than ever. If there was ever a time that we need God to move in our country, this is the time. We are in distress, uh, and I mean, we're poor. Listen, he's not only talking financially poor, but he's talking poor in faith, poor, poor in, 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 in strength, poor in, in many ways. And, and, and I'm telling you today, God is with you. God is right there, and he's waiting for you to put your trust in him. And I like what verse 2 says, preserve my life. For I am godly and dedicated. David is talking and he's saying, Lord, preserve my life. Preserve my life. Lord, don't, don't let the enemy beat me. Don't let the enemy take me down. I'm not, I'm not giving in to the enemy. If, I, if there's anything I want to tell you today, don't, don't give in to the enemy. You know, the enemy comes in many forms, but, but he comes in, in forms of, of negativity, and he comes in forms of human beings, and he comes in forms of natural ways and natural things, natural forms, and, and so many things. But I want to tell you something. God gives you his word, and God tells you he's going to see you through. And, and if you can trust God and believe God that he is with you and that he is going to see you through. And David writes here in verse 2 and says, Preserve my life, for I am godly and dedicated. I am godly and dedicated. Don't, don't, go, don't go to the world. Don't, don't, don't start depending on other things. Don't, don't leave your, your dedicated life, your godly life, and, and start depending on the world. Hang on to the Lord. And he says, oh my God, save your servant, for I trust in you, leaning and believing on you, committing all and confidently looking to you without fear. 
or doubt. Fear is an enemy. Let me tell you, fear will cause you to, it'll paralyze you. Fear, fear will cause you to do what you would not normally do if, if fear were not around. Fear, fear, fear don't let you move in faith. It, it'll cause you to, to, to doubt God. It'll cause you to, to, to start doing things you would never do before. To, to trust the world, to trust other things other than God. Don't, don't, don't trust fear. Don't, don't lean on fear. Fear will. You know, you know, one thing I've learned about fear is that fear sometimes, sometimes we want to feel fear, and sometimes you do feel it, but sometimes you don't feel it, but it's just a reaction. I like what, I like what he says here in verse 3. In verse 3, he says, Be merciful and gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. To you do I cry all the day. If, there's, if I'm going to lean on anything, if I'm going to trust anything, it's going to be the Lord. I'm going to lean on him. I'm going to trust God. If I got to cry all day uh, to the Lord till I get an answer, I'd rather do that. I'm not going to lean on anything else. And, and he says in verse 4, Make me your servant to rejoice, O Lord, for to you do I lift myself up. For to you do I lift myself up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. I'm going to lean on you. You're the one I'm going to call on. You're the one I'm going to cry out to. I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to lean on fear. I'm not going to lean on doubt. You're the one I'm going I'm to lean on. Verse 5 is very powerful. And I want you to see what it says. It says, for you, O Lord, are good. For you, O Lord, are good. And ready to forgive our trespasses, sending them away, letting them go completely for and forever. Imagine. Imagine. And you are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all those who call upon you. Now, now I want to say something because we're living in an hour today where, where, where people believe that they can live in sin and still be okay. But I, I want to tell you that I differ with that because that's not biblical. The Bible says that you'll take your sins and he'll cast them as far as the east is from the west. And he'll cast them as far as deep as the sea is into the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember them ever again if you repent of your sin. What does the word repent mean? It means that you turn away from them. It means that, that you walk away from your sin. You turn away from them and turn to him. You see, God is the only one who can forgive sin. And he's the only one that can set you free from sin. And he is the only one that can deliver you from sin. He's the only one that can set you free completely from sin. There's nobody else in the world that can do it. There's not even a preacher that can do it. It's only the Lord. He gave his life on a cross over 2,000 years ago that you and I would be delivered and set free. That the blood that he would shed upon that cross 
would deliver us completely. Forever. Forever and forever. For you, O oh Lord, he says in verse 5, are good and ready to forgive our trespasses. Sending them away, letting them go completely and forever. And you are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all those who, are, who, who call upon you. And verse 6 says, Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and listen to the cry of my supplication. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in, in Psalms, and, and, and if I'm not mistaken, the Bible says it like this. It says, if, if, we, live, if, we, if, we, if we live in sin, he said, the Lord will not hear our prayer. But David says, if he forgives me, if I'm cleansed, if I'm living right, that day I can come to the Lord and he can give ear to my prayer and listen to the cry of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, he says, I will call on you for you will answer me. Listen, they're in your home. They're in your home. They think they can shut you out of a church building. They think they can shut you out from, from God. They think they can turn you away from God by keeping you locked up in your house. But I'm telling you something. All you got to do is lift up your voice and God is open to your cry. All you got to do is open your voice. God is right there where you're at. And all you got to do is lift up your voice to the Lord and the Lord will hear your cry. In the day of my trouble, I will call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like unto you among the gods, O Lord, neither are there works like unto yours. There is none, there is no one like God. There is none like the God, the Lord of lords and the King of kings. There is none like our God who gave his life for us on a cross at Calvary. There's no one like him. He answers us when we cry out to him. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Listen to me today as you, you cry out to the Lord right there where you're at. He answers you. He'll answer your prayer. He'll answer your cry. Don't let the enemy tell you you're crying for nothing. You, you, he's not hearing you. You know, there's a lot of people that don't think that God is hearing you. He hears you. You may not feel anything. You may not see anything. You may not feel anything anymore. But let me tell you something. You're not praying by feelings. You're not crying out to see anything. He hears you no matter what. And all you got to do is believe by faith that when you call out to God, he hears you. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. And if you and I will, will listen to him. <coughs> and if you and I will, will just call upon his name, he's going to, to do a work like no one else can do. He's a mighty God. I like what he says. In the day of my, of my trouble, I will call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like unto you among the gods, O Lord, neither are there works like unto yours. No one can do what God does. No one can do what he does. I'm telling you right now, you mark my words. There's a revival coming to America like there's never been. You might look around right now and say, how can there be a revival coming? That we can't even go to work. There's nothing happening. You, you wait and see. There's a revival coming to America like there has never been. And you're going to see the multitudes coming to Christ. 
There's a revival coming to America like there has never been. All nations whom you have made shall come and fall down before you. O Lord, and they shall glorify your name. And they shall glorify your name. For you are great and works, work wonders. You alone are God. You alone are God. There is no other beside our God. There's no one else beside our God. People look at me sometimes and think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you something. You get ready because there's a revival coming like never before. Don't you give in to fear and doubt. Don't you give in to, to fear and doubt. I'm telling you, there's a revival coming. You keep your faith going. You keep praying. You keep believing because God is about to do what nobody else has ever been able to do. I like what he says here, for you are great and, and work wonders. You alone are God. I like verse 11, he says, teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Teach me your ways, O Lord. He gave you a Bible. All his ways are right in here. All his ways are right in here. They're right in that book. Get into his book. You got all the time in the world right now. You're locked in your house. Get into his book and find out all his ways. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely, reverently, to fear and honor your name, that I may respect you, O God, that I would respect who you are, Father. I will confess and praise you. O oh Lord, my God, with my whole united heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. I will glorify your name forevermore. I like what he says here in verse 13. He says, for great is your mercy and loving kindness. For great is your mercy and loving kindness toward me. You need to say it right there in your house, right there where you're at right now watching me, and you need to say it to yourself. For great is your mercy and loving kindness towards me. And you have delivered me from the depths of Sheol or from the depths of hell, from the exceeding depths of affliction. You have delivered me. Do you remember where he brought you from? Can you look back just a little bit and remember the hell he brought you out of? Can you remember what you were going through and he brought you out of it? What a powerful God. What a God of mercy and love. He brought you out of it because he loves you so much. I like what he says here. Oh God, the proud and insolent are risen against me. A, a rabble of violent and ruthless men have sought and demand my life, and they have not set and they have not set you before them. Imagine. We're facing an enemy today that don't, don't believe in God. The, the majority of, of the situations we're facing today have nothing to do with the virus. The majority of the situations we're facing today have to do with people who don't even believe in God. We believe in God, but they do not believe in God. I'm telling you today, Put your faith in the Lord. Put your trust in God. The, the, they want to take you down. They want to take us down. But I'm telling you today, you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. He is the one that gave his life for you. And I, I'm telling you something, there's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ.
They have sought and demanded my life, and they have not set you before them. But you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy and loving kindness and truth. What a powerful God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God we serve. Don't, don't give up on God. Somebody was telling me the other day, I, I, I believe there's a lot of people going to give up on God through all of this because they, they can't stand just being at home and not see anything happen and, and, and they don't know what to believe and, and, and they're, they're, they're going. And, and, and I said, no, no, I don't believe that. I believe that the, the true Christian, the person that's had an experience with God, is never going to give up on God. I believe, and I'm telling you today, hang on to the cross Hang on to the blood of Jesus Christ. Hang on to who he is. Hang on to what he did for you at Calvary. Don't believe anything anybody tells you. Don't believe that they're going to try to convince you that all of that isn't true, that all of that is, is not for real. I'm telling you today, you hang on to your faith in Jesus Christ because he is real. He's coming back for a people who are serving him, who believe in him, who are washed in the blood of Jesus. Will you keep your faith in him? We're going home soon. We're going in the rapture soon. I'm telling you, the rapture's around the corner somewhere. I like what he says here. Oh, turn to me and have mercy and be gracious to me. Grant strength, might, and inflexibility to temptation to your servant and save the son of your handmaiden. Lord, give us strength. Give us mercy. Have mercy. Be gracious to us. Give us strength that we can make it beyond anything else in life. Give us the strength to do it, Lord. No matter what comes, we're going to make it. We're going to do it. We're going forward. Praise his mighty name. I said praise his mighty name because he is good. He's mighty. He's powerful. You need to, you need to get excited right there in your front room. You need to get excited about who Jesus Christ is, man, and exalt the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit take over right there where you're at. He's a mighty God. Oh, turn to me and have mercy and be gracious to me. Grant strength, might, and inflexibility to temptation. Don't let temptation be the one to have more strength than your God. Show me a sign of your evident goodwill and favor. Last night I was in prayer at home. Last night I was reading this, this psalm. Man, let me tell you, the Spirit of the Lord was right there with me. Let me say this to you. I don't care what goes or comes, as long as I know he's there. My God, let me tell you something. He's all I need. There used to be a song they used to sing years ago that said, He's all I need. He's all I need. Uh, as long as you got Jesus, as long as you got Jesus, you got everything. As long as you got Jesus, you got everything. He's all, all you need. All you need is Jesus. What a powerful God. What a mighty God. He says, show me a sign of your evident goodwill and favor that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Let all those out there who, who think you're, you're wasting your time, who think that, that you've lost it, man, let, let them see that you have something that's real, man, that's, that's powerful. It's powerful. We, 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 got, we, got, we got what's real. We got something powerful. 
Let me tell you, they don't understand it. They don't understand why we, we keep going. We keep going. This, this Sunday morning, we're going to be, we're going to be having uh, a parking lot service. They, they told us we could have a parking lot service out here in, in, the back, in, the, in our back parking lot. That's the biggest parking lot we got. And, and they said we could have a parking lot service. Uh, if, if, if you're able to come, I invite you to come. Come, and, and if you want to stand outside of your car, come and stand outside of your car, man, and, and, and join us, man. And we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're not going to let nobody keep us shut, shut up or shut down or, or keep our mouth shut. We're going to lift up the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The neighbors may call in and say we're making too much noise, but that's okay. They gave us permission to be out there, so we're going to be out there. We're, we're, we're Pentecostal. We believe in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. They never told us we could make no noise. Praise the Lord. I'm, if, 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 they, if they want us to be a quiet church, well, they, they came to the wrong people. We're not a quiet church. We're a loud church. We're a we're 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 a, we're, we're a church that man. We're we're man. We we can't be quiet. My God, if you're a quiet church, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know how you can be quiet and know the Lord. Praise God. This is an exciting day. This is an exciting time to know that man. We're in the will of God. Praise the Lord. We are in the will of God. We're going to see God move. We're going to see God do great and mighty things. We're going to see God heal in cars. We're going to see God save in cars. We're going to see God set free in cars. I mean, man, we're going to see God do things that they, they, they think they can tie you down. They think they can limit you. But God is not limited to a car. God can do anything. He's not limited to a jail. He's not limited to a prison. He's not limited to anything. God can go anywhere. And let me tell you, he's going to do it Sunday morning right out here in our parking lot. What an off, awesome, awesome, awesome God we serve. I like what he says here, show me a sign, your evident goodwill and favor, that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you are Lord. Will you show your approval to me when you help and comfort me? When you help and comfort me, will you show us, Lord? Will you show us a sign? Will you give us? Brother, let me tell you, the greatest sign we have is the cross. What he did for us on Calvary, what he did for you and me on Calvary, is the greatest sign you and I have. You don't need any other sign. He gave you Calvary, he gave you the blood, he gave you the Holy Ghost, he gave you salvation. You got everything you need. You got the word of God. You got every, then you got a preacher like me on, on, on YouTube. Man, you got everything you need. Praise God. All you got to do is worship Christ. Live, lift up your hands right there in your home. Lift up Jesus Christ right there. Lift him up. Lift him up. They thought they would keep you out of church. No, I'm bringing church to you right to your home. Lift him up right there where you're at in the mighty name of Jesus Right now, I'm going to pray for you right now as the, the singers come and the musicians come. I don't know if Sister Becky remembers that song, He's All I Need, but if, if they do, I, I want to have them come. I want to pray for you right now. I'll pray that God will bless you. I'm going to pray that God will lift you up. I'm going to pray that if there's any fear, if there's any doubt, if you've had a, 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 a confusion hit you, if, if you've thought of giving up, if you thought of, why, why are we going to keep going? Is this all there is? Are we going to keep going this way? No, let me tell you something. God is going to change things. The biggest revival is coming. That we're going to see the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. I want to pray for you right now. Believe me, I would never lie to you. I would never lie to you. I want to go to heaven. 
I want to go to heaven. I want to, go, I want to see you in heaven. Praise God. I love you. I love you more than you think. Hallelujah. Father, would you bless your people through this internet? Would you bless your people through YouTube today, Lord, through this internet? Would you bless them? Would you meet every need they got, my God? Would you strengthen their hearts, their souls, their minds? Would you lift them up, Lord? Father, if they've had thoughts of giving up, of going to the world, Father, would you, would you strengthen them today, Lord, like your word said? Would you give them the strength of the Holy Spirit not to give up, but to wait for that revival, God, because it's real soon? Lord, I pray that you would do a work in their lives, do a work in their homes, cause them to rise up, Help them, Lord, with every need they got. Help them, Lord. Help that mother right now. Help that mother, Lord, that has a difficult time. Help that father, Lord, that's not working. That, that home, Lord, that's struggling right now, Lord, I pray you help them. Father, I pray that you would move. Move for them, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I love you and I thank you for them. And I give you the glory, Lord, for everything you do. Yes, Lord. And may your name be glorified. May your name be praised, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let it be done, and I, I thank you for what you do. Touch that home, touch that mother, touch that father, touch them children. Touch that grandma that's been praying for her family. Lord, touch that home that doesn't have a job today. Meet their need. Father, I pray that you help them. Don't let them go down. Don't let their faith fail. Let their faith rise. Lord, don't let the devil lie to them any longer. Lift them up, Jesus. Let them know, Lord, that I love them. In the mighty name of the living God. And we thank you, Father, for everything you do. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Would you call me? Listen to me. Would you call that number? Would you call it for that handkerchief? I want to get that handkerchief to you. Even if you don't buy a t-shirt, listen to me. Call me for that handkerchief. I want to give that handkerchief to you. I want to get it to you. I want to, I want to put it in your hands. I believe God wants to give you miracles. Call us, please. I want you to know I love you with all my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
Jesus. 